approximating second order derivative with finite difference. So the approximation error we define is basically this minus this. Okay, a approximation error is ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 minus 2ui divided by delta x squared minus this. And one of the very powerful way to analyze the accuracy of an approximation scheme is Taylor series. Taylor series expands the solution at a particular point as a function of the values and derivatives of the same function at a different point. So for example, ui plus 1, which is defined as the solution u at i times delta x, right? because each grid spacing is delta x, the ith grid point is at x equal to i times delta x. Oh, uh, not i, but i plus 1 delta x. So i delta x plus another delta x. It can be expanded using Taylor series, assuming the function is smooth analytic. It is equal to k goes from 0 to infinity of of u at i delta x of the kth derivative uh, times delta x to the kth power and uh, times 1 over k factorial. Oops. Right, so this is the Taylor series of expanding the u at i delta x plus delta x on u at i delta x. The first term, k equal to 0, is the zeroth derivative, which is u itself. And the second term uh, is, is the first order derivative. The third term is the second order derivative, which is what we are trying to approximate. And the third order derivative, etc., is something also we don't want. So basically, in this Taylor series analysis, we want to also write down the Taylor series of ui minus 1 and use the coefficients to cancel the, the zeroth term, k equal to 0 term, cancel k equal to 1 term, and preserve k equal to 2 term and make the k equal to 3, 4, etc. terms as small as we can. That's something we want to do right now. ui minus 1 would be equal to ui delta x minus delta x. It is equal to the same summation, same 1 over k factorial. This is uh, just the copying Taylor series, i delta x, except for <laughs> Instead of plus delta x, here we get a minus delta x to the kth power, right? Okay, so now at the map, let me, let me make another page. What? Okay, let me make another page for that. Oh. Yeah, didn't know it does that. Okay, so of course you, let's see, same color. Of course ui is just equal to u of k i delta x. All right, only one term. So, so let's look at the accuracy of this scheme. So the solution, the solution error is 2 over delta x, let me, let me just copy them down, uh, not 2, it's 
1 over delta x times ui plus 1 plus 1 over delta x times ui minus 1 minus 2 over delta x by the way squared times ui and also minus so this is plus and also minus partial x squared partial x squared and for each of these terms we are going to expand the Taylor series the first term we look at the first order right so this one is proportional to u of i which is also u at i x i delta x this is u i prime this is u i double prime u i triple prime u i quad prime so this prime i use it as shorthand for taking derivatives one prime is first order double prime is second order for example if we just expand the, the second order derivative, we get, of course, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, etc. Right? So this is, I'm expanding, I'm writing down minus partial square u partial x square as a linear combination of all the derivatives. And this is at, at xi. Okay, another example is when I look at the third term, which is also very easy, the first coefficient minus 2 over delta x squared, and all the other coefficients are 0. Right? And these two terms are a little bit more tricky, so that we need to follow this Taylor series. The first term is 1 over delta x squared. The second term is 1 over delta x squared times the coefficient in the Taylor series, which is k equal to 1. 1 over 1 factorial is 1, and this is the first order derivative, and delta x. So delta x is the only thing that comes out. All right? And then the second order derivative, we still have 1 over delta x squared, and now 2 factorial is actually 2. We have delta x squared. The third term, still 1 over delta x squared, we have delta x to the cubed and 3 factorial. And delta x fourth, 4 factorial. The minus 1 term, the same, except for when we multiply by delta x, we multiply by minus delta x. When we multiply by delta x squared, we multiply by minus delta x squared, which is the same as delta x squared. And here, delta x cubed, we get a minus sign again. And fourth, we get no minus sign. And this goes on forever, right? So the cool thing is, when we add them up, what happens? First, let's look at the first term. When we add all the constant terms together, what happens? Yeah? They cancel. Huh? They cancel each other. They cancel each other, we get zero, right? Minus two, one, one. How about the second? Zero, right? So that's a well-constructed scheme. We are canceling a lot of terms. How about this one? Also zero, right? This and this cancels. We have half, half, and minus one, zero. All right. So this minus one here, coming from here, is the only one that, if you just look at the scheme along, that doesn't cancel within itself. It cancels with the term it tries to approximate. All right. Now, if you look at this again, the third derivative term, zero again. All right, it's great. But it can go on forever, right? This is the first term that it make, actually makes a non-zero error. And look at how small it is. The delta x squared cancels with the 4, so we get square here. And at the 1 over 24th, what we get is 
delta x squared divided by 12 times the fourth order derivative of u. This is the leading term of the approximation error. Because all the follow-on terms, this term is going to be delta x cubed something. Maybe it's even zero. This is delta x fourth something. All the, all the other terms, they decay even faster as delta x approaches zero. Remember, delta x is a small thing. In our previous example, it's, it's one a hundredth. That means delta x squared is going to be 10 to the minus 4, right? We are dividing by 12, and uh, that makes it 10 to the minus 5. And we multiply it by the fourth order derivative of u, which may or may not be large, depending on what u is. So, so this scheme works well because the approximation error is something small, something scales, something decays to zero very fast as delta x goes to zero. All right, any question about this? So this scheme also makes it easy for us to construct approximations. For example, we derived this particular finite difference scheme from the interpretation of a second order derivative being the first order derivative of slope, right? We can also derive it completely algebraically by saying that I want to multiply some unknown coefficient onto here, let's say A, some unknown coefficient into here, let's say B, and some unknown coefficient here, let's say C. And I want A times UI plus 1 times B uh, plus B times UI minus 1 plus C times UI minus the second order derivative to be something small. I want the approximation error to be small. Then you can derive some linear equations. This is going to be A, this is going to be B, this is going to be C instead. You want A plus B plus C equal to 0. Right? That gives you one equation for three unknowns. The second, you want A minus B to also be 0. That gives you another linear equation. Here, you want to A plus B equal to 1. That gives you another linear equation. That's three equations for three unknowns. You solve them, you get exactly the same numbers you're going to get here. 1 over delta x squared, 1 over delta x squared, and minus 2 over delta x squared. So that also gives you a route to derive finite difference approximations for other operators. All right, so you start working on your project today, I hope. And uh, the first question requires no knowledge of what I'm teaching here. It's just a calculus. The second, you are starting to derive schemes to solve the equations. And I already told you how to do second order deri derivative. You're going to be doing first order derivative yourself. All right, and many of you may already know what is a good approximation for a first order derivative. If you don't, use this to derive it. All right. Any questions?